DreAllDay.com. I want to talk about immigration and the immigration challenges happening in America right now. Actually, is there an immigration challenge? Yeah, I guess we can call it an immigration challenge. So, most specifically, I want to talk about the language around it because this whole thing is you have a certain faction of people who say we shouldn't call people illegal. There's no such thing as calling a human being illegal. No human is ever illegal. Y'all have heard people saying these things, right? And some of you who are uh, watching this, you may be in this camp. So let's talk about that. First of all, let's establish something. The United States has laws on the books. The laws that the United States has on the books say that there are certain rules that must be followed for a person to be in the United States, period. Whether you have a green card, whether you're a naturalized citizen, whether you have a visa, you have to have some type of documentation that says if you are not a, you are not already a citizen of the United States and you're here, you have to have documentation that allows you to be here. Otherwise, you are here illegally and therefore you are what we call an illegal alien. That's the phrase that has been used for a long time, illegal alien, because you are you are in the United States and you're not supposed to be here by paperwork. Legally and factually, you are illegal. Your presence here is illegal. It doesn't mean your presence on the planet as a human being is illegal, but your presence here in the United States is illegal. That is just factually what it is and legally what it is, which means if someone who works for the uh, no, immigration department or someone who works for the law finds out about you, and knows by fact that you are in the United States illegally, they can do something that would get you detained, pro probably uh, deported out of the United States. You're not supposed to be here. Uh, you are here against the law. So this whole conversation of people saying, well, we shouldn't call people illegal. No person is ever illegal. First of all, that's bullshit. It's bullshit because I just explained to you why it's bullshit, because there are laws. And if you're doing something against the law, then you are here illegally. That's There's no other way of looking at that actually there's another way of looking at that but factually and legally there's no other way of looking at it now what's happened is and this is not a new thing what's happened is you have people who are trying to introduce new language to the conversation to soften what is logically correct and the softening of things from being what is logically correct from what is logically correct is a step in the direction of trying to make that thing completely acceptable when it's not completely acceptable. This is something that I've talked about on a few different subjects. So you have the conversation of, hopefully y'all can still hear me with the wind. This is like 80 something in Miami right now and I need the wind. And I don't really like using AC that much. So with the, first of all, the conversation of kids doing things to their bodies All right. this doing things to their bodies in the name of uh what they call it gender affirming care y'all have heard about this right so let's say you have a daughter she decides that she is not a daughter anymore she is a son she's a boy or she's neither and she wants to go and get her breast tissue removed this is there's a certain term for it but basically doing this mutilation to yourself based on what God gave you because you decided that you're not a girl anymore. They're calling this gender affirming care. You see how it sounds much better and much nicer than what it actually is, which is the gender dysphoria. A child having some mental condition that they don't even understand you know, who they are and what they are anymore. So they are mutilating their own bodies in the name of, again, something that sounds good, gender affirming care. Again, it sounds a lot softer than what it actually is, which is nonsense. Then you have women who are deciding that after they have mutually consented to have unprotected sex, which leads to a pregnancy, now they're gonna go and abort the baby. The abortion of a baby is the aborting of the life of that child. You are aborting a life that is killing the child that you voluntarily created. Most pregnancies, 99% of them are hap happen this way. So some people will jump in and say, well, what about rape and incest? This is less than 1% of pregnancies are through rape and incest all most of them 99 percent, are voluntarily created children you go and kill that child they're calling this what are they calling it man i forget they're calling it uh reproductive reproductive care or reproductive uh power or whatever it was the word they're using reproductive something 
Either way, what they're doing is they're making it sound a lot softer than it actually is, which is the point. And this is, I've talked about this on my masterclass. This is satanic. By definition, this is satanic. And I'll explain to you why. Even if you're no expert on the Bible, which I am not, but I do understand this part. I am an expert at interpreting and breaking things down, whether it be the Bible or anything else. In the Bible, God said, you may eat freely. You may freely eat of everything in his garden. Just don't eat from that tree over there. Satan came to Adam and Eve, specifically Eve, flipped God's words around, made them sound different than what God actually said, and tricked Eve into eating from the tree that God said, don't eat from that tree. Eve ate from the tree. This was the forbidden fruit. Then she got Adam to eat from the tree. He did the same thing. And then from there, all hell broke loose literally because they were tricked by Satan because all Satan did was take words that we had already established by God, flip them around, change people's minds based on the flipping of the words, and then all of a sudden things got crazy. This is exactly what is happening in our society right now. People took language that we have already established. This is what this means. You're in this country and you're not here with proper documentation. You are by definition illegal. Now we're flipping the words around. Oh, no person is illegal. They are just, uh, what, are, what are we calling them now? Now they're just calling them migrants. They're just a migrant. They migrated here. Yes, they did migrate here, but do you have proper documentation? Because if you're not, then you are an illegal an illegal migrant, you are by definition illegal. You're not supposed to be here, but we're flipping the words around. So we were saying kids are mutilating themselves, chopping their penises off and chopping their breasts off because they decided that they're not a boy or a girl anymore based on some nonsense that they are taught at school by some purple haired teacher. And now, now people are jumping up and saying, oh, well, this is gender affirming care. Bullshit. That's not gender affirming care. You're not affirming yourself with that. How are you affirming a gender? God already affirms your gender by making you a boy or a girl when you were born. All right, there's no gender affirming care. This is nonsense. And people are going around and basically uh, repeating this stuff as if it's actually truthful or useful or uh, accurate when it's none of the above. It's none of those things. And again, this is a satanic attack on truth is what's actually happening. And this satanic attack on truth, uh, we can't allow this to keep going. This can't just keep going. And we have to be able to call people out on the nonsense. We gotta be able to call people out on the bullshit. Uh, when people are saying some bullshit, we gotta be able to call it out. Like, that's not true. This is not logical, this is not factual. And when you're here and you don't have proper documentation, then that should be able to be called out exactly as it is. And what people are trying to do is what we call the appeal to emotion fallacy. The appeal to emotion fallacy is when someone points out something that is actually true to you, but instead of you saying, you know what, that is true, and trying to basically logically have a conversation, instead what you do is try to make that person wrong by appealing to emotions. Oh, well, calling that person illegal is just, it's not nice, it's not friendly, it's not caring, you're just not showing proper respect to that person by calling them illegal. I don't give a damn what your saying that I'm not being. If you're saying I'm not being nice or I'm not being friendly, I'm calling somebody illegal. Well, are they here illegally? Yes? Okay, then they're illegal. How you feel about it has nothing to do with what's factually true. Facts do not care about your feelings. So if a child, if your daughter or son is mutilating their genitals based on some nonsense that they were taught, going against what God granted them, and you're calling it, this is a gender dysphoria. That's not gender affirming care. You're not affirming anything. You can't affirm your gender by cha changing it to whatever you think it is. Gender is a immutable characteristic. You can't change it. So there's no such thing as gender affirming care. No such thing. And at least the way that it's being uh, designed right now. Unless the gender affirming care is you're a boy and I'm going to teach you that you're a boy. That would be gender affirming care, but that's not the way it is being used. And abortion is abortion. I'm not even saying that abortion is necessarily wrong if you want to do it. If a woman decides she wants to abort her baby and kill the baby that's inside her, if you want to do that, just call it what it is. That's my most important point as, as it stands now is call it what it is. You're aborting the baby. You're killing the baby that's inside of you. Just call it what it is. That's what you're doing. Do it. Just keep it real that you're doing it. Don't say it's, what are, what are people calling it? Reproductive care? How is that reproductive care? And they're saying, well, a woman, nobody should have a say in what a woman does with her body. We're not talking about what a woman does with her body. We're talking about what the woman is doing to the baby that she already made a decision what to do with her body, which is to have unprotected sex. That's how you got pregnant in the first place. And now 
we're saying, oh, well, no one should have a say in what a woman does with her body. Well, wait a minute. She laid down with a man and had unprotected sex to get pregnant in the first place. That's not just talking about the woman's body. That's talking about the baby. So we're just going to ignore that part. We're just going to ignore the baby part. This is all about the woman's body. No, the woman already made a choice with her body. Again, how she get pregnant? Did she already make that choice? Last time I checked, that's the only way, only way it happens. But if somebody knows something that I don't know, you let me know. Somebody let me know. So this whole thing with the illegals, we can call things what they are. And I'm the type of person, if you're unfamiliar with my work, right, we call things what they are around here. All right, somebody saying it's a bullshit, we're going to tell you it's bullshit. Somebody's lying, we're going to say it's lying. And if it's true, we're going to say it's true. We don't need to sugarcoat language to make people feel better about what's factually true and what's factually in front of us. And if you ever are in a position where you feel as though certain language needs to be softened or sugarcoated because it makes you feel a certain way to hear something that is true being said to your face. What you need to consider is not the harshness, quote unquote, of the language or the harshness of the tone of whoever is giving you the information. What you need to consider is why are you so averse to being told the truth to your face? That's what you actually need to consider because if something's true, then it's true. Again, facts don't care about your feelings. If it's true, it's true. And if you don't like what's true, then what you need to go to work on is the truth rather than going to work on the words of the truth. See, if I don't like the fact that, let's say I was in this country illegally, let's say I go to another country and I don't have proper documentation and I'm just there, I'm in Germany and I don't have proper documentation to be in Germany and somebody says, well, Dre, you are illegal. You're illegal in Germany because you can't be here without this documentation or this paperwork. If that's true, it's true. I got to ask myself, first thing I got to ask myself, is it true? If it's true, then instead of getting mad at the person who pointed out that I was illegal, instead what I need to do is go to work on the fact that I'm illegal so that it's no longer true, which means either go get the proper paperwork so I'm here illegally or B, get the hell out of Germany so that I'm no longer there illegally. All right, that's what I can do. See, there is a way for you to address this. It's just that people are addressing the wrong part of it. You're addressing the feeling instead of addressing the fact. And this is the challenge that we have in the world today. And what's the most interesting about all of this and I'm going to wrap up on this point, is that the people who are, quote unquote, calling this stuff out, these people are not dummies. These people are not idiots. They know exactly what they're doing. See, some of you may go to attack them and go ad hominem and just start attacking them. Look at these idiots calling these things out. Man, they got some other new construction here. They're doing a lot of construction here in Miami. So those of y'all looking for a place to live or you're thinking about where to move to, Miami is the place to go. So they got so, many, so much construction here. It's crazy. I just saw something new going up. I didn't even know it was going up. But anyway right in the middle of Overtown too. But anyway, these people are not dummies. They're not dummies at all. They know exactly what they're doing. They know everything that I've said here. They completely understand it. It's just that they're in a position where they can't admit or affirm these things because it would go against the grain of what they have to uh, basically preach, either because they work for a certain organization or they work in a certain industry in which they're not allowed to share these truths or they got a certain boss where they can't say it, or they're connected to a political party or something like that where they can't say it, or they have certain friends and no uh, professional connections where they can't say these things because they would be excommunicated from the group and that would hurt their ability to continue to, continue to generate an income and make money and have a career. So again, these people are not dummies. So when I say these things, I'm not saying them because these people don't know them. I'm saying them because they do know them and they're feigning ignorance and again, continuing to appeal to emotion when you're pointing out the actual facts to their faces. And most of these folks, when I get in conversations with them or exchanges with them, they end up they're trying to block me or ignore me or not wanting to talk to me at all because they know I'll call them out on their nonsense. So I'm hopefully, for those of you who also see this, at least you saw the part before I explain to you how these people are smart. You can use this in your own conversations with these people because they know exactly what they're doing. They're trying to emotionally manipulate people with the nonsense. And or if you didn't know this, now you know. And if you're one of the people with the nonsense, watch out because I am coming for you. I will find you. I will call you out. I will call you out on your platform in front of your fans and in front of people who you respect and call you out on your bullshit. So with all that said, folks, make sure you join Work On Your Game University because there we get into what is true what's factual and what works when it comes to your business, when it comes to your personal life. And we understand that there's a mix between the two because what happens personally affects your business. What happens business wise affects you personally. And we have a four part framework based around mindset, strategy systems, and accountability. That's all at work on your game, university. 
workonyourgameuniversity.com. So if you're a top level performer or you plan on being one, go to workonyourgameuniversity.com. That's where you can work with me directly. The only place I work with anyone directly is in the university. That link down below in the description. Work on your game. Dre, all.